In this video, I really wanna to talk to you about why I think every fisherman, especially during the late summertime and into the fall, should be a junk fisherman. And why junk fishing, I think, can truly help you to catch more and bigger fish throughout the course of a day. And so in this video, we're gonna talk specifically about that. Now, before we get into the video, this one's brought to you by my apparel company, Finn Fishing. Right now for the month of August, 2024, if you buy one of my USA made sun shirts, you actually get a free American Bass t-shirt. This is a tri-blend t-shirt. It is one of the most comfortable t-shirts that you will ever wear. I can almost guarantee it. Not only that, I've had a few people recently who I don't know come up and say, that the sun shirts are the most comfortable sun shirt that they have ever wore. So something I'm really proud of, obviously my best friends are gonna tell me that, but when people you don't know tell you that, it even means a little bit more. So anyways, right now all you gotta do, add the sun shirt that you like to cart, add these, the American Bass t-shirt, the size that you like to cart, it will automatically discount at checkout. Shopping at Fin Fishing is truly the best way to help support this channel. All right, let's talk about junk fishing. Now for those of you who may be newer to bass fishing and may have never really heard the term junk fishing. All junk fishing really means is that you tend to catch a lot of fish throughout a day on a lot of different lures. Like if, like if you look at, I think a lot of us as anglers, like we like when we get on a, a top water bite and we throw a walking bait all day and catch a bunch of fish. Or we like when we get on a jig bite and we throw a jig all day and catch a lot of fish. But when you're out there and you are junk fishing, if you catch 10 fish in a day, it might mean that you caught fish on eight different baits, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. Let me, let me talk about that real quick because when I was growing up, you always talked about the guy who had one rod on his boat. We, we called him the one rod Todd. And if you ever saw a guy with one rod on his boat, you always said that guy knows exactly what he's doing and he's gonna do really well in a tournament or on a fishing day, whatever it may be. In today's age, I really believe that junk fishing and having as many rods as you're capable of having. So if you have a boat, it might be a little bit more than if you're fishing from the bank. But regardless, the more rods that you have, I truly believe that the more bass that you tend to catch. And the biggest reason for this is because all bass have really different characteristics. Something that we know from fishing is that bass are a little bit like humans. They have different I think the best way to put it is they have different levels of aggression during different times of the day. So every bass out there sometimes may be very aggressive. There are days out there when the, all the bass are very non-aggressive, but in any course of a day, you, if you fish by a 200 fish in that day, you might have 15, 20 different levels of aggression that all these bass are displaying. So with that being said, I think it's important that you show different bass, different lures, because each one of these lures may help increase your odds at catching that one specific bass. And, and the, this is a perfect example of this is what just happened to me um, a couple of days ago. For those of you that know, I, I've been in North Carolina filming uh, towards the end of last week, and I fished a lake down there called Lake Chattooge. This is a spotted bass fishery primarily. There's definitely largemouth there, um, but it's primarily spotted bass. And they also, the, the spots there eat um, a bait fish called a blueback herring. Now, I have fished down in South Carolina on Lake Hartwell before. It sets up similarly to this lake. And during this time of the year, when we get into the summertime, a lot of these spotted bass do kind of the same thing. And that is that they're going to set up around deeper brush piles. You know, brush piles, cane piles, if you can find some wood in 15, 20, 25 foot of water, you're typically going to find some spotted bass there. Now, with that being said, the day that I went fishing there, I probably found 40 or 50 different brush piles in that single day, and probably about 30 of them had bass in them. And not just a few bass, some of these were schools of 15 and 20 and 25 bass on one brush pile. Now, when I first got there, I really struggled to figure out a bait that I thought that the bass would eat. I had a lot of fish that were coming out of these brush piles, and a lot of them were not eating my bait. And I, I would see them visibly with my own eyes. I would see them with my Mega Live. 
and I could not get these fish to commit. Well, what happened throughout the day is I, every now and then I would catch a fish on a certain bait. For example, I caught a couple on a jerk bait and I'm like, all right, all these fish want a jerk bait. Then I went to like five or six brush files through a jerk bait, didn't catch a fish. And then I caught fish on uh, a bait that's uh, like a sinking topwater bait caught a Lucky Craft Wanderer. I thought all the fish were gonna want that. I went and fished them all over the place and then all of a sudden I wasn't catching fish anymore. And then I like, I went through a progression of different baits and every time I'm like, okay, this is the bait. I just caught two fish in a row on two different brush files. This is the bait. And then I would go to the next four or five and I wouldn't catch anything. And the thing is, is that every time I would move different areas and put that bait in front of a different group of fish, I was dealing with bass that all had different aggression levels. And with that being said, those fish, even though they were really set up in a very similar area across the lake, like same depth zone, same type of cover, same type of structure, they're different fish. They were different groups of fish. They were displaying different levels of aggression. And therefore, a lot of times they wanted different baits. And so the best thing that I could do is that every time I pulled up to a different area, to a different brush pile or cane pile, was show them the kitchen sink, show them everything on the front deck of my boat. I would throw five, six, seven, eight different baits at these fish to try to get them to commit to one of them. And it just seemed like every now and then I would catch one and it was usually on a different bait. Now, going back to what I was originally talking about when it comes to junk fishing, this is not just a spotted bass thing. This is not just a, a, a blueback herring thing. This, this is a crossed the the this is a cross fishing and i think in late summer especially in the fall this is even more important because the fish can really get very spread out you will have some fish deep you will have fish some fish shallow you will have fish on docks you will have fish on grass you will have fish on rock you have fish all over the place and so sometimes the best things that you can do is have four different rods, five different rods, six, seven, eight, ten. Gosh, I had 15 rods on the front deck of my boat at one point in time. And I was just, and now look, before I get any further, I know some of you guys don't have 15 rods and you don't have the money for 15 rods. So that's why I say have as many rods as you are capable of having, because every time you cast, you may be showing your bait in front of a fish that is just a different fish. He has a different level of aggression. And sometimes it takes a few baits to figure out what that specific fish wants. Now, I, I know that that sounds like a lot of work, but in late summer, early fall, throughout the fall, like fishing can be tough. And sometimes you just simply have to throw your, a lot of different baits to kind of figure out how to catch fish here, fish there. Fish under a dock here, fish in the grass there, fish on a deep hump here, fish on a shallow whatever there. So that's why I think it's really important to have a bunch of different rods and to have a bunch of different ones with you. And this definitely applies for the late summer and early fall, but I really think that this is something that just is good to do throughout the entire year. And if you look at some of the best fishermen in the world, guys like Jacob Wheeler, Brian Thrift, Alton Jones Jr., like some of the best anglers. These are guys who have a lot of different rods on their front deck. They, they, they don't. The other thing about, sorry, another thing. The other thing about having a lot of rods with you is that it just keeps you in a state of open-mindedness. There's too many times as anglers, we get closed off. Man, they're hitting a top water. I'm gonna throw top water all day. They're hitting a chatterbait. I'm gonna throw a chatterbait. This happened to me the day. Look, look, this is the other thing about a fisherman. The, the day after I fished at Chattooge, where I was open-minded and kind of figured something out, I had a very closed-minded day. I got on a bite doing something that I really, really love, which is skipping a big swim bait underneath docks, and I got really closed-minded to it, and I struggled a little bit. So it's okay if you have a bad day, but I think you'll have more good days if you put some rods out there, have a lot of different options. All right, sorry, that was a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to check out Finn Fishing for a little combo. And I will see you guys tomorrow.